Hi everybody. Um, I just want to do a short, a couple short little videos just to show you what I'm looking for for today. Um, so we are going to be focusing on theatrical elements. I'm going to do a little zoom in. Um, oh, whoops, sorry. Let me tell you page number first. So we're on page 374. Um, and we are going to examine theatrical elements. So theatrical elements are elements used by dramatists and directors to tell a story and create an interpretation on stage or in a filmed version of a staged play, which is primarily how, how we're going to be using it. Um, the two versions that we're going to be um, examining are the Zeffirelli version. This is the more traditional Traditional, okay, and this is Lerman. He is the more modern version. All right, so as you watch these film clips, you're going to see first we'll do Act 1, Scene 5. That is the Capulet Party. And I want you guys to take special note about how the actors look in both versions, like costumes, makeup, what are they wearing, um, how they deliver their lines. Um, you can also consider like how they speak their lines, but then think about how they, what, what are the actors physically doing? So when they say visual delivery, they mean physically what do the actors do to interact with each other. Um, then also you can look at objects like the set design, like the location, where does it take place? Think about any props that are used. Um, one thing that I am going to um, kind of add into objects that I just think is interesting between both of these versions is that in the traditional version, when Romeo and Juliet first meet, we have um, a male singer singing like a slow ballad. And then also in the more modern version, we have a female singer, but still singing a ballad. Now, of course, in the more modern version, she's singing a, a much more modern sounding song than in this version. But in both, when Romeo and Juliet first see each other, we have that like romantic ballad being sung by somebody at the masquerade ball. Um, also, just to get you guys started, one thing I'll notice about this um, is the costumes. So, of course, in the traditional version, this is a true masquerade ball. And I know you all know what that is because we talked about that in class. Um, so they are all wearing masks, right? And then in the Lerman version, instead of a masquerade ball, it's a costume party. And I want you guys to really think about the costumes that they're wearing. So Juliet, for example, is an angel. Um, Romeo is a knight in shining armor. Okay, little little symbolism for you there. Armor. And then we have Tybalt is a devil. Okay, and I think you can go on and on. You can kind of... Um, you know, think through some of those other symbolic appearances. Um, I think I want, I kind of want you guys to think about the vocal and visual delivery yourselves. But one thing that I do notice is that, um, well, actually, no, I'll save that for the next one. So this is the, remember, this is the party scene. Okay, then we're going to turn to page uh, 382. So 382, and you're going to do just the same thing for Act 2, Scene 2, which is the balcony scene. Okay, so in this one, you're focusing on set design, right? So Zeffirelli, again, we're going to see this is more of a traditional balcony. Okay, kind of looks almost like a castle. Um, in the Lerman version... We do have a balcony, but he actually has 
Juliet and Romeo come down from the balcony and mainly interact in the pool, right? So most interaction not on balcony in pool. Oh, actually, wait. Oopsie. I meant to put that one in this box. Got ahead of myself. So the blocking, this is how the actors move and interact with the set and each other. So that I got a little bit ahead of myself. In Zeffirelli, they mainly stay on the balcony. Right? Whereas in Lerman, he has Juliet actually come down from the balcony and they interact on the ground together in the pool. Um, other elements might include sound effects, lighting, music, costumes. Um, one thing I think is that in the Zeffirelli version, it's a little more um, serious. I think in the Lerman version, there's a little bit more, um, it's sort of more like playful. We see a couple things where um, Romeo like makes fun of, or it, well, kind of makes fun of the nurse, right? When he's wistfully looking for Juliet and then the nurse pops her head out and he's kind of like, ugh. So this version's a little bit more playful. Like there's a little bit of humor into uh, in, involved in that scene, which is probably not typically seen during Romeo and Juliet. <clears throat> um, and then lastly, what you're going to be doing in Springboard, I'm going to turn page one more time. So we are going to read and view this excerpt from West Side Story. Um, I think it's a good idea for you guys to read it before you watch it, just so that you can really understand what they're saying. Um, but this sets the scene for you. So Maria and Tony have just met at a dance. They danced and kissed, and now Tony is looking for Maria. Um, so remember, they kind of belong to two. They belong to two different um, gangs in West Side Story. So in the uh, in West Side Story, really the gangs are. Um, the Sharks and the Jets, and uh, Maria is a Puerto Rican. And so this is kind of like a Puerto Rican gang. They're all immigrants. And then this one is kind of like a, um, like the white, um, I'll say non-immigrant kind of gang. Okay. Um, this gives us our scene description, which is important to read also. And then they give you the whole text of the scene. Of course, when you watch it, you'll see, right, this is from the scene. You'll see they're actually singing. So at some point, there's like some song lyrics in there. Um, and then I do want you to answer these questions. So I'll go through that real quick. Um, what is the significance of the setting where Maria and Tony agree to meet next? Why might the director have chosen this setting? So the keyword here is next. So I don't know if anyone um, has already read this and already caught this, but actually I'm going to underline it for you. Maria says, I work at the bridal shop, come there. So they're going to meet at... The bridal shop. Okay. Why do you think the director would choose to have Tony and Maria meet at a bridal shop? I think it's to foreshadow their wedding or like intention to be married. Okay. <clears throat> um, then what comparisons can be made between the relationships of Romeo and Juliet and Tony and Maria? I think there's a lot of similarities between those two. Um, so the first most obvious similarity is they both belong to groups that hate each other. Okay, um, they're not allowed 
to be together. And in both, they have a secret relationship, right? Awesome. Now this one I think is maybe a little bit harder. Why is it significant that Tony and Maria repeat the phrase tonight, tonight, over and over in their song? Um, and I am going to kind of go ahead and let you guys know that focusing on tonight, tonight, it really um, kind of helps them to focus on the present or like the now, as we say sometimes. And it emphasizes that they may not have much time together. Okay? So that's pretty much all I wanted to go over with you guys as far as springboard. Um, I am going to take just a quick second to review some things that you should have already completed in your pink packet. Um, so you should already have pretty, you should have all of this done already, but I just want to show you kind of a screenshot of it. So if you want to compare your character map to my character map. I know I sent you the answer key, but I don't know, some people may have missed it. So obviously you can pause the video. Um, you wanna make sure that the Montague side is on the left, just like these are on the left, the Capulet side's on the right. We have Lord and Lady Montague are the parents of Romeo, Lord and Lady Capulet are the parents of Juliet. Um, Romeo's closest friend and cousin is Benvolio. His other close friend is Mercutio. Juliet's close friend is the nurse. Her cousin is Tybalt. Um, she also has a suitor, Paris. He's the one that wants to marry her. Paris is a boy, just in case any of you get... I, a lot of people really get confused about that. Because um, I know in today's society, Paris is maybe more like a female name. Paris is a boy. Um... And Mercutio and Paris are both related to the prince. Um, we have our other three characters here, Friar Lawrence, Friar John, and the Apothecary. They're kind of not really related to anybody. Um, and then Balthazar is, he's really, he's meant to be a kind of like a servant to the Montague household. Um, sometimes in film versions, he's portrayed more like a friend or sort of like a cousin, like he's, like he's part of the gang or the family. Um, that depends on the artistic interpretation. But that's what you should have there. Um, also, here we go. Um, I just filled out, go a little closer in there. Okay. I filled out the blanks that you should have so far for Act 1 and Act 2. Again, I sent you guys the answer key for this. But you can pause the video so you can just make sure that you have all the blanks filled in correctly. Um... And then I'm doing the same thing here for the journals. So we should definitely have finished journal one and journal two. React to the plot so far. What do you think of Romeo? Is he what you expected? Um, this is the one that we just talked about on our Zoom call. How could the balcony scene be modernized to 2020? And then today's journal, after we watch all of our film clips, I just want you guys to tell me which version is your favorite, Zeffirelli, Lerman, or West Side Story. And the important part, I want you to tell me why. So give me as many details as you can think of to explain why those versions are your favorites. Um, or why I should say which version is your favorite because I'm really interested to know. And then we will actually discuss this at 1 p.m. tomorrow, which is Friday, 3-27, via Zoom. Okay, so anyone that wants to jump on that Zoom phone call, I'll send out a link tomorrow, and um, we'll just discuss these different versions. 
All right. So thanks, guys. Um, hope everyone is doing well and that I will see you tomorrow.